Jana kati kamera ina Phone ine kamera kana yenyi sina zenyu Ana mune mango ndezo Thank you very much. Uh, uh, the president will address you now, and then we will talk about the, the process towards the end. Well, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First, I want to just uh, apologize to our journalists for this. Shall we have silence? Thank you. I want to start by apologizing to all of you, our esteemed journalists. Uh, first of all, I'm overwhelmed by the number of journalists who are here present. I'm used to addressing rallies, but never a rally of journalists. Uh, all the same, I just want to apologize for our late uh, start. Uh, but this is because we're trying to manage our internal processes, as you know. The MDC Alliance is an alliance, a conglomeration of uh, seven political parties. But not only that, we also have the largest uh, party in the uh, alliance, the Movement for Democratic Change, um, is um, supposed to also um, consult in terms of our internal processes. So we had to have our national council, as well as our national executive, just to engage our leadership to represent um, the, all the provinces, the provinces in terms of what they want. We have since done that, and we are so excited that with the 
a powerful um, in, you know, engagement on the way forward. And I'm glad to say that uh, we took note of uh, two important developments. The first one is the development at ZEC, our engagement with ZEC, which is very clear that uh, ZEC has shown that um, they are not willing to be open to dialogue, they are stubborn and arrogant, they are opaque in their processes, they have chosen the path of uh, 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 keeping uh, processes non-transparent and also uh, non-conforming to the laws of our country in terms of the Electoral Act and also in terms of the Constitution. We had raised a number of fundamental issues, issues to do with violence and intimidation, the abuse of the state, state resources, uh, traditional leaders, and the politicization of food, particularly in the context of uh, ZANU-PF and the government distributing food to the people during an election time. They have started distributing food just this previous uh, two weeks, and it's a big issue, it's a big issue which has to be sorted out. There's also what we have discovered, which is the capture and abuse of the public media, in particular ZBC and also our Zim Papers uh, um, uh, stable, <coughs> particularly the Herald and the Sunday Mail. Those issues were raised. We also raised deadlock issues around the issue of the ballot paper, wherein we are saying we wanted the ballot paper to be consistent with the national demand in terms of the constitutional obligation, in terms of full disclosure of the source status, traceability, and security of the ballot paper. They chose to evade that and to avoid it. There's also the standards and the norms and values of international electoral standards, which require agreement and full disclosure around every facet of the ballot paper, which regret regrettably has not been done in the case of our elections in Zimbabwe. <coughs> Even at this late stage, there is no evidence whatsoever how many ballot paper were printed, who printed them, where they were printed, and their security. So there has been a consistent negation of international standards in terms of non-disclosure <coughs> of electoral material, including all sensitive material, the issue of the ink, in particular, the silver nitrate composition of the ink, the voting pen, and the seal. The issue of the biometric voters' law is also an issue in question, which again undermines the credibility of the process and also almost sets this election on the path to being determined a flaw, flawed election. The issue of the polling stations, again, we have had problems with the issues of polling stations which are not agreed upon in terms of their composition, their deployment, and their various placements. In terms of our electoral mapping, we have taken issues with those issues, and we hope that uh, it's an issue that will be sorted out. We, did, we had also requested that polling agents be uh, known and also be advertised, in particular the polling officers. Well, in the past, we've had members of the border gates being taken to be polling officers. We wanted to know the identity and the source of the various polling officers. It was not disclosed, and they've not disclosed. We also wanted uh, the voters' votes to also be uh, placed on the various polling stations. Since now, we have our polling stations with the maximum number of uh, uh, people who are registered. We're expecting and hoping that this would be done. Again, it was not done. Now, it's clear that we have a ZEC that is biased. We have a ZEC that has lost the confidence and trust of the people of Zimbabwe. We have a ZEC that has chosen to throw away the whistle as the referee and join another team, particularly the ED team, Munangagwa's team. And this is why Munangagwa is not complaining, because the team is playing on his behalf. But what we have resolved to do is to make sure that we defeat both the referee and the player. Mr. Munangagwa and ZEC must both be defeated. Defeated in terms of the overwhelming sentiment in the country, that we are not going to allow them to get away with murder literally and metaphorically. What does it mean? What it does mean is that on Monday, the 30th of July, it is Independence Day for the Second Republic. We are going to be voting overwhelmingly for change. And this is why we have said to Zimbabweans, let us stop 
this cheating. Let us overwhelm their machinations and schemes in our voting in numbers. Make sure that we, the people, stop the cheating, stop the deception, and also stop the shenanigans that we have seen being instituted by Z. We are going to turn in our numbers and defeat them. In fact, we want to make sure that they will not steal this election. So we have put in place and rigging mechanisms to deal with the issues that they hope they are going to use. Contrary to the perception that we are going to boycott the election, we can't boycott our victory. We can't boycott our mandate. We can't boycott the clear mandate we have been given by the people of Zimbabwe. Winners don't quit. Winners don't boycott. We are the winners in this election. If anything, we've also realized that it's a machination by Zanopir to try and get us into a position of despondence and start <coughs> causing anarchy so that the election is avoided. Now, we know them, we know from our intelligence that they are panicking, they are scared of an election. Munangagwa knows that defeat is staring in his face, but we want to assure him he has nothing to fear. He has done his part. He should not be afraid of the inevitable. Victory is certain for the people of Zimbabwe. He must be there to accept defeat in magnanimity. And we are ready to embrace him as we go forward, as a citizen, <coughs> as a former president, and also as a liberation icon. That way, that's how we are going to make sure our country moves forward. So yes, we know that it is in the nature of ZANU-PF to cheat and to also undermine the will of the people. But we are saying to people of Zimbabwe, come in your numbers to shame the detractors. Let us have an avalanche of support for victory, for real change, for the inevitable, which is the victory of the people. Having said that, I think I will take questions, and like in ZANU PF, where they just address you and walk away. <laughs> we are not going to walk away. We want to hear what your questions are. In fact, my teammate requested that we just address and go, but we can't do that. We want to represent the new, let us allow questions. We respond to questions if there's any, so that we are able to move forward. Thank you very much. Let's take three questions, and the president will answer those and proceed that way. Uh, Tafmana Islai Media. There was a, um, a proposal uh, yesterday at um, uh, at a meeting with Zek that because of uh, the fear that they, if um, voters use a pen, it will migrate to another president. I have you agreed to use the pen as suggested yesterday, uh, to use the pencil instead, sorry. Well, I told you that uh, victory is inevitable. <laughs> there is a clear and predictable victory for the MDC Alliance. It's known in Zanopia. It's known by the people of Zimbabwe. This is why they have been panicking of late running all over, trying to hold meetings, trying to distribute food, trying to distribute May seed and fertilizer in June and in July. We, we understand their fear and we, we sympathize with their anxiety, but there's nothing that we can do beyond that. We are clear on our unbreaking mechanisms and units to say we deploy all the necessary mechanisms to make sure that we stop them from rigging this election. So yes, uh, part of the pen is what we are going to be announcing to the people on how we are going to stop reading. But what I can assure you is that come Tuesday, there's going to be a new government in this country. There's going to be a new president in this country. Our people are going to vote overwhelmingly and resoundingly. And everyone knows that this is the time for change. And it's inevitable, it's unstoppable. And what you are saying is part of the raft of measures we have put in place to make sure that we deal with uh, any uh, possibilities of uh, manipulation of the election. Uh, good afternoon, Aldrin Simpia here from ENCA. You say that uh, President Nangagwa must accept defeat. Will you from the MDC also accept defeat if the results come out and say that in actual fact it is Nangagwa who has been elected? We will not accept any fake result or any fiction. We will only accept genuine election. And if there's going to be a genuine election, there's nothing to accept which is contrary to our victory. Was victory is inevitable. The people have spoken. Advocate from your own statement, you seem to be of the view that Zek is not able to produce a credible election based on 
they um, not being able to produce a transparent process right through. Is it not the most logical thing to boycott such a flawed process? <coughs> I, I hear your logic, uh, my brother, that we should uh, boycott. Like I told you, we can't boycott ourselves. We are Zimbabwe. It's not possible to boycott our victory. That is what losers would want us to do. Now, we don't take advice from losers. <laughs> we don't take advice from those who are defeated. We are very clear and very circumspect. Let us respect the will of the people. The people want us to defeat dictatorship, to defeat poverty, to defeat tyranny, to defeat their hopelessness. They want us to defeat the kind of embarrassment that they face as a people for the past 38 years. And this is why we are giving them a fighting chance. I can't be written in history as a person who, de who you know, betrayed and deprived the people their God-given right. We have done our best to campaign. We have done 74 rallies across the whole country. God is going to do the rest, and we know that is going to be a miracle. Our victory is set. That you should know. And I know that is, you are going to be the first beneficiary. And we will celebrate with you. Thank you very much. Yes, wow. Like I told you, I've been engaging the people of Zimbabwe, traditional leaders, war veterans, across the whole country. I've moved across the country, I've listened to what the people want, including even in the um, serving officials of government, the civil service included. I've also consulted with our structures. I'm a leader who is democratic. I consult those whom I lead. I don't lead in a vacuum. I lead in a context, and the context is the people. The people inform and advise our correct line. The correct line is what they've told me I should do. I pushed for the reforms. We are still pushing for the reforms. Even if the reforms are not there, my view is that I would not accept anything less than the reforms. But the view of the people is that Mr. Chamisa lead us to Kenan, lead us to victory, lead us to a new Zimbabwe. And who am I to say no to the will of the people? I will lead them. So I hope that answers you. It might be my position, but at the end of the day, I'm a servant of the people. I'm guided by what the people want. They want their victory, and I want to be there to convince that victory. I only convince it on account of participating on the basis of their will, on the basis of their instruction, on the basis of what they tell me. So, so the U10, don't, don't see any inconsistent. In fact, it's a consistent position. Well, the reason why we want reform is because we want to secure the people's vote. We want to protect their vote. So that is the reason why we are pushing it. Yes, Zek is intransigent, but we will still defeat them, even in that step one. Thank you, Osam Piringi, independent journalist. Uh, Mr. Chamisa, I think the Zimbabweans will be so happy to hear <coughs> some sentiments of peace from you. Thank you very much. I wanted to find out if you have uh, abandoned the stance on demonstrations, sit-ins, or disruptions at polling stations. Well, I, I suppose, uh, my brother, you are saying that the demonstrations are not peaceful. Demonstrations are instruments of peace. And the reason why we have been demonstrating is because we do not want to take up guns. We have the capacity, we have the energy, we have everything to take up instruments of violence. But that's not just our default setting. That's not our DNA. Our DNA is peace. Our DNA is working together for our country. We are patriots. We want this country to move forward. <coughs> if anything, the problem is that it takes two to tango. We have nobody to tango with. Munangagwa is not willing to be on the path of peace, on the path of progress, on the path of patriotism. This is why we would have wanted him to look at the minimum conditions for election so that we go into an election without a contested process. Right now, we have a contested process. And our wish is to make sure that we don't have a contested outcome. But for that to happen, this is why we're demonstrating. In fact, we're demonstrating for sanity. We're demonstrating for some modicum and semblance of normals. We're demonstrating for constitutionalism, which is being torn apart. We're demonstrating for legality and the rule of law, which we are seeing being negated. So it's not as if when we go to demonstrate, when we pick it, these are constitutional rights. We are simply utilizing our rights. Those in ZANU-PF do not want to exercise their rights because their rights are guaranteed and secured. But for those of us who are ordinary citizens, we have those rights in the Constitution. And we'll continue doing that. 
In fact, I've already said, on Monday we are beginning our celebration. Soon after voting, people have to gather for celebration. We are not accepting anything less than a celebration for the people. Because we know that we have won. We are just going there to confirm a delayed me. Victory is certain, my brother. Yes. What, 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 what's your response to, to the statement by the former U.S. Attorney General that some of the demands are unreasonable? The number two, you, you have articulated your level of confidence in that. Do you not think that this will stop the flame of what happened among some, some of the supporters? Don't even worry about what happened. The voters are going to be overwhelmingly vote. They were listening, they are listening. I've said to every Zimbabwe, those who are sick, we must make mechanisms to take you to the polling place. You will get well in a new Zimbabwe when we get our hospitals fixed. Those who cannot come because they are out of the country, please make sure you secure your tickets. You come and vote in our large numbers. Our path is as west as Zanubia. Those are the twin evils that are going to defeat our prospects for change in this country. And this is why we are encouraging every Zimbabwe to come out in their large numbers and vote. So don't worry about apart. People listen to their leadership. We have asked them to participate in the vote, and we have asked them to be peaceful in their engagement and disposition, and we hope that it will work out. And I just want to also take this opportunity to say that I have seen unfortunate comments being attributed to the, the former Secretary General of the United Nations. He never said that our demands are unreasonable. There is distortion of things. And I have seen what ZANPF is doing. They have hired what are called fake news mercenaries. Yeah? And we know where they are coming from. They are coming from a country. You know, you want me to say, I will not say their name. You know, we must be more responsible. Uh, <laughs> you know, Mr. Beach is whispering, I must say, you know. We have the information of the country that they have hired. And what they are doing is that they are issuing fake information. Uh, Chamisa has fired BT, Chamisa is involved in an accident. That's what they were doing in other countries where they held dictators. We are watching them. And people of Zimbabwe must not be hoodwinked by this force. Info. They will actually escalate as we go into the election. Just listen to what we say. Don't listen to what they say. Because their information is distorted. Their information is meant to mislead you and also to produce a particular uh, you know, um, threshold of panic. But don't, don't listen to that. <coughs> President, uh, former Secretary General um, Kofanan is very clear on our issues. The elders are very clear on our issues and we respect their position. They know that our position on the ballot is consistent with what the guidelines of Sadaka are is consistent with the law of the country. Just like Sadak, we have met them. They are very clear on the issues. The only thing is that we also <coughs> await for Sadak to make the necessary interventions on the stalemate issues, and we hope that they will respond in due time, even before the uh, actual election Monday. So don't worry about all those other issues. We are clear on the issues, and we are moving forward. Right, the president will take one last question. Two. Okay, yeah. Well, uh, two last one. Two, two then. Yes, there's always what is called the presidential pardon. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, from Tusi Richard. Um, Mr. Chamisa, you've been so sort of accused in the past few days of trying to cause anarchy. Maybe you can take this opportunity to preach some messages of peace ahead of the elections to the populace. Well, I, 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 I'm a man of, of, of peace. <coughs> My whole life has been about peace. I'm a pastor, a man of God, not a fake man of God, a true and genuine man of God. I honor men. I honor peace. I honor the people. I also honor God. So in my en engagement, I'm very consistent on peace. It's an allegation which will not stick because they are afraid of the capacity that we have. Indeed, if we are to say this country is to be ungovernable starting tomorrow, Munanga will not be able to control it. We have the capacity to control it. And this is why we have been very, in fact, we must be acknowledged as peace icons. We have managed to smoke a peace pipe, even with a crocodile who is so violent and arrogant. And that we must be appreciated for. Because we have tried to build and contain the pressure of the young people. Young people out there are restless. They are so desperate. They are willing to go and go the extra mile for their freedom. But we've said, please, let us build our country together. And this is why we're not going to be adventuristic, but we are going to be insisting on our rights. We are going to be insisting on defending our vote. We are going to be insisting. If they really go cheat, they will face the news. That they must know. It's not a threat. It's a good promise of exercising our instruments of peace. 
to make sure that we are able to move together as a country so that we build a one united nation. So yes, I've also heard things about Chigumba. I'm not interested about Chigumba's personal life or private life. I actually apologize with the circumstance. I wouldn't want anybody to pierce the veil of uh, personal life. We would want to look at the issues. Let's not distract ourselves from the issues, Her personal issues, his omissions and commissions in the boardroom is what we are focusing on, not in the bedroom. That's not our interest. It's very unfortunate. We don't want to go into the bedroom. We are simply in the boardroom of Zach. And that's where our emphasis is. In terms of their omissions at law, their omissions in terms of the constitution, their omissions in terms of legality. But in terms of what people are saying, very unfortunate, especially misogynistic uh, you know, comments. They are regrettable. We don't want that. That discourages women who are also courageous to take up position of leadership. We want to see women respected in positions of leadership. So even if you disagree with Yugumba, don't cross the line. Don't, and I've told our supporters, please let us not undermine the rights of others. In our pursuit of our rights, let's not also cross the line and behave in a manner that is not consistent with the democratic society we want to build. We want to see more women. You know, Chikumba is a courageous woman, but we want that courage to be seasoned with integrity. Courage alone without integrity is a bit problematic. And that's why we are insisting that let us protect our women in positions of authority. Let us also not undermine or abuse them. It's very important to see more women in positions of leadership. As you will see in our cabinet, you will see more women in positions of leadership. And let me just take this opportunity to also say, there are a lot of people in government who are worried about their future. This government we are forming is a government for everyone. <coughs> what we are changing is the leadership of government, not the bureaucracy of government. We are not touching the bureaucracy, we are just reorienting the bureaucracy to make sure that they are consistent with the dictates of good governance. And moving forward, every patriotic Zimbabwe, teachers, soldiers, police, you have a, a role to play in building our great nation including those in Zanupia, we are building a great nation. Let's all unite, let's all focus on building our nation and having one common vision, one Zimbabwe, one people, one God, and one victory. Thank you. Mr. Chisa, the last one. Thank you very much. Um, given you have declared victory for yourself before uh, Monday, do you think we are already in a contested result after, after Monday? <laughs> And, and also, what do you think your former Prime Minister Morgan Tangrai uh, uh, may you saw recently? What do you think you would get uh, made of the current situation? <laughs> well, I, I'm Mr. Tangrai's representative. What I'm making of the current situation would have been Dr. Tangrai's position. That the environment is not conducive, that the behavior of Zek has more omissions and gaps than uh, the things that they're supposed to do. And that, of course, we have a lot of issues around the process itself. It's a contested process. We are yet to see the outcome, but the process is contested. You would have said that, and I'm just confirming that position. But now, you must know that uh, uh, that's no longer consequential. What's consequential is what we have now said going forward, so that we are able to build a, a, a united uh, position. You are saying that uh, it's a contested position, so the election is going to be contested. Look. <laughs> We have already said that we are contesting the process. If the outcome is going to be an outcome of a contested process, it will be contestable. But the fact is that we will win an election whether we are uh, you know, uh, having our hand tied behind our back, we will win this election. We have won this election. It's the people of Zimbabwe. It's known by people in zanu -PF that we have won this election. They know it, and that's why they are now jumping from pillar to post, you know, uh, trying to find ways of rescuing their fortune. They will not win in this, this election. <coughs> they will not. Mr. Mugabe himself, who is their founding father, well, believes in the authority. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I ask uh, members of the media to remain where you are until the president has left the room, and then you can start reorganizing yourself? Well, I always love you to see the press going first. I mean, they want to go and file their copies. <laughs> <laughs> we must give them their priority and, and precedence. Thank you very much. Then we can also take our own. Thank you. Just for a different. I mean, we should not be possible. Thank you. Okay, friend. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.